Hello and welcome to the Great Eagle Mind Show on Lawizer. This is Aman Abbas. Today I have Sanjeev Gemawat with me. He is the Group General Counsel with Anta Group. Sanjeev, a very warm welcome to the Great Eagle Mind Show. Um, thank you, Abbas. Um, thank you for having me here, and my all best wishes to you and Lawizer. The way in which you are progressing, the way in which you have created this institution, my all best wishes to you. Thank you so much, Sanjeev, and uh, many congratulations on your new role in Vedanta Group. And uh, as we can see, the group is fairly active, actually hugely active now. Uh, what are some of the things on your agenda right now? Uh, thanks, Aman. First, uh, uh, of course, I have recently joined this uh, organization. Um, you asked me about my agenda. My agenda, of course, gets governed with the agenda of the organization. And if you notice the way in which this organization is progressing in, in almost all sectors which are prominent and relevant as far as economy is concerned or the life uh, lives of people are concerned, I think uh, this organization is uh, um, there in almost all sectors. Uh, if you notice the, the vision of the chairman is uh, to create an institution and create an institution for the people, for the society at large. And I think that my agenda gets governed with the vision of the chairman. And this is how I would be taking even the legal function uh, as far as uh, the, the uh, you know, my contribution uh, to the organization is concerned. Yeah, that's well said. In fact, you know, um, in fact, one of the topics that is being talked about a lot in today's world is uh, ESG. And uh, you have done a fairly large amount of work in ESG. And, um, and, you know, I actually wanted to take that, that up as a topic today. Um, you know, just, I mean, this is a very crucial part of any corporate, uh, not only in India, but worldwide. Uh, and uh, the, the, the general counsel and the, and the legal side plays a very crucial role in it. So I just wanted you to ask you uh, the G part, the, the governance part, you know, uh, you know, what, what, what are the contributions of uh, a general counsel and how it's being governed? Well, Aman, very interesting question. And I think, you know, to understand the whole ESG uh, part, I think we need to understand why this term even got originated. This term got originated somewhere, somewhere you know, say two decades back or so. But then the, the, the main issue why this has got originated and generated goes well with the with the with the economic growth and the innovation which is taking place in the society and world at large if you notice we are today shifting from shareholders capitalism to stakeholder capitalism and stakeholder capitalism why we are talking about that for the last few years for the simple reason that we are on the edge of industrial revolution 4 the industrial revolution 4 which is largely dominated by the, the technology by artificial intelligence by internet of things and so on i think there there's a realization in the world at large that the government would have a very very limited and restricted role in terms of governing the organization or the corporate sector and in fact the corporate sector would be dominating the lives of people now from that perspective a discipline gets originated that yes there should be a self governance mechanism a self governance mechanism and that gets you know clubbed in terms of this these concepts of esg the environment social and governance now you ask me the the the, the last part of the governance and governance of course governance in almost all kinds of activities it's not the governance in terms of compliance with the law or the rules and regulations of the, or, the, or the law of the land it goes beyond all that and when it goes beyond all that it essentially means the 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 way in which you you create your vision for the organization the way in which you you do all your activities uh, uh, and that that gets reflected in terms of constitution of your various forums in, within the organization and how you would be driving the business so this this is how I take it. Uh, this is how I take it, and then the G is undoubtedly a very important part because that will give the direction to the organization how they would be continuing their business objectives in the times to come. So you made a very interesting point, Sanjeev, that uh, you know uh, the, the the private sector is going to drive uh, you know a whole lot of uh, you know things in future. Now uh, you know ESG is 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 fairly global terminology and it is impacting everyone. Um, so, uh, 
you know is there any body that actually decides that you know these are the elements of esg which you know globally uh, the companies have to follow are there any is there any kind of you know global body that comprises of you know uh, you know representations from several countries which actually put together some kind of a norms how, how does it work i mean you know or does it mean differently to a company in india than to you know someone in the us so how do, how does this work well aman the essential part of esg is the reporting part because that reporting determines to what extent you are following the esg parameters but then this reporting is not quantitative this reporting is quantitative as well as qualitative the moment it becomes qualitative it there, there comes the 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 role of the subjectivity in terms of views and counter views of people so globally if you notice in the last few years i don't say that the, the global indices have been prepared so far the best of the organizations of the world including big fours of the world they are all preparing indices in terms of reporting on the esg parameters some of the parameters have already got developed in terms of that qualitative and quantitative parameters and that gets reflected if you, if i talk about the indian uh, setup uh, you might have noticed that the ministry of corporate affairs or the securities and exchange board of india they came out with their esg reporting also this this reporting in terms of brsr Uh, uh this is nothing but an esg reporting uh, effectively now you ask me about the global standards yes there are multiple organizations worldwide who are developing these indices those indices are being being uh, you know uh, 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 are being taken into consideration by these rating agencies also because you know they rate on the basis of those 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 indices that whether the organizations are focused towards esg or not so this is how these things are developing and evolving and i'm sure in the times to come we would be having the better parameters uh, better uh, quantitative and qualitative reporting uh, and uh, of course we are you know as happens you know in almost all areas wherever new things gets um, you know um, uh, uh, created uh, you you have a, a process of evolution of the uh, whole mechanism and this is where we are right now um, we have progressed a lot there is no doubt about it today organizations are reporting and very very serious about esg reporting because that esg reporting determines the value of the organizations amongst investors amongst community at large and i think this is what is you know important in the times to come so sanjeev you know what is the interplay of various governments and private sector uh in developing esg norms uh and uh, you know at what levels you know these things are happening because there are different ministries involved you know say for example if you talk about india and uh, and then then different kind of corporates involved so how how does that interplay well um aman i think you know today's governments uh, are not doing or, the, or or not coming out with the policy framework in isolation if you notice that all government policies and frameworks and rules and regulations they are open for public debate public dialogue and thereafter government invites comments and suggestions from the industry and that is a constant and a, you know evolving process which governments follow and the private sector also actively participates as far as those policy frameworks are concerned now if you notice that even the esg framework which the government has introduced in the recent past like whether the ministry of corporate affairs or the sebi i think the the contribution of the industry was taken into consideration now uh, you can very well say that one industry uh, it, it's getting impacted by various ministries and all that and i think that there's a constant process of dialogue amongst those ministries as well in terms of coming out with the right kind of framework um, uh, in terms of reporting now Uh, if if i hope i answered this question if you have you know further on this then i can uh, slightly get into more detailing on this but then i would also like to point out one more th- important thing that today's governments are recognizing and acknowledging the contribution of the private sector gone are those days where where uh, private sector used to be seen with certain amount of suspicion there was a thought in terms of the government functioning uh, functioning or the government government functionaries uh, that private sector is there in the society to earn profits and profit making itself is bad now we are shifting from that thought to a respect for the private sector and then today we are saying that no this private sector is the wealth creator that needs to be uh, respected 
I, I, I distinctly remember the Prime Minister a few years back uh, in a, uh, on, on 15th of August, uh, you know, a speech. Um, he said, he said that these wealth creators should be respected. And I think that simple words of respect the wealth creators, that conveys a lot in terms of the government policy formulation, uh, governments inviting people and the, and, the, and the private sector in terms of a, uh, for constant dialogue in terms of coming out with the industry specific policies or the, or the industry uh, or the society, um, you know, um, uh, benefit, uh, the, the, the policies which benefits the society and all that. I think that constant dialogue is happening now. You've talked about the reporting part. So, you know, what are some of the elements, uh, you know, that are to be reported just for the viewers benefit? Well, Aman, it's multiple, you know, it's multiple. You can't imagine the, those kind of things and information which we were not reporting earlier under the garb of, say, confidentiality. Those things are getting reported. Organizations are reporting their employment numbers. Organizations are reporting what kind of diversity numbers you have. Organizations are reporting what kind of legal cases you have. Organizations are reporting what kind of contingent liabilities you have. What kind of assets you have in terms of tangibles and intangible. And that kind of specificity, specificity is getting reported today. Now, it's not numbers. It's a qualitative. It's no. It's it's also a qualitative aspect of those numbers in terms of and so that the investors at large or the society at large can understand what's the real worth of these organizations. So this is how we are, you know, we are going on the next stage of reporting. And there, ultimately, you know, again, I, I link it with all that with the stakeholder capitalism. Today, today, organizations, you know, are, are very much focused in terms of that, that these organizations are existing. For the, for the benefit of society at large, they are not existing only for a profit ma making or wealth maximization per se. They are existing for the for the for the society at large. Now, if you know, in this context, I, I, I remember the World Economic Forum when it says that the, what should be the purpose of the organization. Now, the purpose of the organization is the continuity of the organization because organization who continues, they would be giving benefits to the society at large. Now, there lies the whole philosophy of ESG and it's all linked with industrial revolution for it's all linked with the with the stakeholder capitalism and that's the reason why we are discussing today esg Aman, because you you came out with this topic on discussion on esg for the simple reason that that you 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 see a value as far as the whole concept is concerned absolutely esg is definitely at the center stage now changing tracks i uh, wanted to uh, you know ask you sanjeev that uh, you are a part of a very interesting initiative uh, called uh, GCAI or General Council Association of India. And um, there are lots of interesting things uh, that you're doing. But let me begin by asking you a simple question that, you know, more often than not, uh, general councils are seen only as uh, a representative of a corporate, whereas they are also lawyers and there is a lot more due to them. And, um, and I think, you know, uh, it's precisely because of that reason, uh, you know, some of you have come together, some very senior folks, and, uh, you know, starting to talk about the evolving role of general counsel. So, uh, Sanjeev, how do you think the role of a general counsel is evolving in general? Well, uh, Aman, very interesting question and very emotional uh, also question for me personally because I am, you know, part of the whole discussion on the GC and GC's role, GC's relevance, um, uh, the uh, GC as a profession, why GC as a profession has not been acknowledged and recognized so far. So I am part of all that discussion and it's very emotional issue for me. Uh, well, you know, coming to the first part of it that yes, what general consensus role relevance would be as far as the, the, the whole uh, economy is concerned. As I said, that the government would be having very limited and restricted role in the times to come and particularly in terms of the industrial revolution for which would be largely based on digitization, largely based on artificial intelligence and so on. So who would be complying with the law? Who would be taking care of the various rules, regulations um, uh, uh, and, and also you know, besides you, you mentioned about ESG, who would be taking care of all that? Now there lies the this particular profession which is called general counsel. Now general counsel as a concept and as 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 a as a practitioner of uh, you know general counsel discipline, what I do 
let's understand that first. So I define myself as I'm a strategizer for the, my business. I'm an enabler for my business and I am a protector for my business. And I define my, my role in these three parameters. And this essentially needs that I need, need to have business orientation. I need to know what my business is all about, how I would be contributing to my, my profession. So it's a much wider role than as a lawyer. Lawyer has a limited role, but then it has a it has that all those ingredients which a lawyer should have. But then beyond that also, it has a larger role. Now, why it becomes an emotional you know, subject for me, for the simple reason that if you notice, all professions get created with a professional body. Without a professional body, there is no profession. Now, this is one profession where there is no professional body. And that is what, what disturbs me. What essentially disturbs me, a very fact, that all general counsels are essentially advocates under the Advocates Act. But the moment they become general counsels or they take employment in, in, the, in the private sector and they are doing the same law work, legal work, the Advocates Act or the Bar Council regulations, they don't acknowledge and recognize them. Why? So I think this, this inconsistency in approach in terms of rules and regulations that need to be addressed and that was one of the major objective of the formation of the GCI and we wanted this GCI to take this issue forward in, and, 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 and if required the rules and regulations need to be changed, if require, required a professional body needs to be created and I think this is where we are. Uh, let me tell you Aman, we have gathered sufficient support not only in the professionals but also in the government machinery, in judiciary, in senior lawyers and all that uh, and of course industry. Uh, I think uh, um, shortly we would be achieving this very objective. Thank you. So, uh, you know, just one question. So, I think this is uh, pretty good that, you know, a, a body is formed and you're working towards that direction, which is going to, you know, create self-regulation for the general councils and all of that. Uh, how do you think that this uh, body um, or general councils put together in general are going to support the governments and policy making and things like that because I think you are the ones who are implementing all the policies and uh, and therefore you know uh, your role has to be prominent in the policy making. So how do you uh, think that GCI is going to take that step forward and work with, closely with the government? Well, you know, very interesting question again, Aman. I think, you know, the, if you see the progress which GCAI has made so far, we have tied up with almost all NLUs. We are, you know, developing programs, you know, and, um, you know, um, uh, uh, various modules uh, for the students at large. So that is one part of it. Second part is, of course, the statutory recognition. And third part is very important part, which is a, is a, is a role of GCI in the policy formulation. So if you notice, GCAI is a body comprising of general councils and those general councils are coming from varied industries. You have automobiles, you have mines and metals, you have cement, you have steel, you have technology, you have um, you know um, software development, you have representation of almost all industries in this body. Now these professionals know what business needs, what kind of policy formulation or framework should be there. So now besides the industry specific bodies which we have in the form of say CII or SOCM or PhD CCI and, and so on, there is a need in terms of a specialized body of general councils who can give suggestions and comments to the government in terms of various policy formulations. Because ultimately if you notice that all rules and regulations get framed by the government and rules and regulations are being complied by, by or implemented by, by, by general councils. And I think there lies that kind of nexus and the, you know, the, the common objective between these two institutions. Absolutely, absolutely. So all the best uh, for that, Sanjeev. Thank you so much for being on the Great Legal Mind show and uh, all the best uh, for your all future endeavors. Uh, thank you very much, Aman. Uh, thank you for having me here and absolutely pleasure speaking to you as always and wish you all the very best. Thank you so Take much. Care. Thank you. Thank you. That was Sanjeev Gimawat, Group General Counsel, Vedanta Group. Thank you very much. See you next time.